Good evening, fellow flight sim fans. This is Brandon324 from Virtual International Flying Club, dedicated to the enjoyment of virtual flight and the building of friendships. You can check us out at www.flyvifc.org. That's www.flyvictorindiafoxtrotcharlie.org. On the right-hand side of the screen, that is our home page. That's where the previous web address I gave will take you. From there, you can register in the forums. I encourage you to check it out. Try it. See if you like it. It's unlike any other virtual airline on the web. You know, other virtual airlines, they have a schedule. You take off at this time to this destination. Well, with our club, you choose what aircraft you want to fly. Choose what time you want to depart. Choose where in the world you want to go. Only requirement we have is that you file one pilot report per month. That's it. Simple. I encourage you to check it out. It's a great club. A lot of interesting stuff on the forums too. And we have a lot of activities. We have our monthly, every month there's a new cross-country uh, cross flight. For example, this month it's the India Coast, I believe. We have a group flight every Sunday at about 8 o'clock Central Time. We have a mid-month helicopter flight. Those are fun. <laughs> Anyways, there's good stories about that stuff. Helicopters are not my strong point, I'm just throwing that out there. And there's a flight board with certain activities, and there's military missions, recently added military missions on the club. Be sure and check it out. See if you like it, at least try it. See if you like it. Like I said, it's unlike any other virtual airline out there. Moving on, I'd like to welcome everyone to this pilot episode, no pun intended, of Food for Flight. Today we are headed to London Heathrow from Lyon, France in a Piper Navajo at a al cruising altitude of 10,000 feet. Uh, this trip, well, uh, up on the left hand side, I'm not sure if you can see, we're already reaching the English Channel. But uh, this trip should take about two hours, give or take weather conditions. Now, the idea of Food for Flight came to me because uh, there are other things I like to do besides Flight Simulator. One of them is cooking. And uh, I started toying around with the idea of combining them. The fact that we're an international flying club, we have a lot of members from around the globe. We fly to a lot of places around the globe within our club gave me the idea, how about I do a cooking show, coincides with Flight Simulator, about a dish from where I'm flying to. For example, today's episode, we are heading to London, so I'm going to demonstrate how to make English fish and chips. Great dish. I cooked it once already earlier this week, just to the, the part of the experiment with this idea. And uh, I tell you what, work turned out pretty good. So I thought I'll just make a video, show everybody how to do it. And that's where we are right now, on our way to London. to enjoy some fish and chips. So why don't we get started while our plane is in the air and head toward the kitchen. Welcome to my kitchen everybody. Now as I said we're going to be making uh, fish and chips since we are flying to London. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about fish and chips. It originated in 19th century Britain and uh, traditionally made with cod or haddock. Now we're going to be using cod for this and uh, often served with mushy peas as a side dish. Again, we're not going to be making that. We're just going to be making the fish and chips. Um, 
uh, our only side will be malt vinegar for dipping, obviously. Um, trawl fishing in the North Sea led to fish and chips becoming a stock meal in England. Uh, in fact, <laughs> this is pretty interesting, during World War II, fish and chips was one of the few foods in the United Kingdom not subject to rationing. That's how much of a stock meal, how popular uh, it was. They didn't want to ration their fish and chips. So, uh, with this video, I'm going to show you how to make them. Now, let's go to our ingredients. The ingredients needed for fish and chips are four large potatoes, one cup flour, one egg, one teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon ground pepper, one teaspoon salt, small cup of malt vinegar, one cup of beer or ale, in this case we're using ale, a large mixing bowl of water to put the cut up potatoes in, pound and a half of cod fillets, and one quart vegetable oil. Okay, so first things first, we are going to set the beer off to the side along with the egg. We are going to add the flour to the medium mixing bowl. And the baking powder. And the ground pepper. And the salt. Then, we are going to get a whisk and whisk that up. Put the whisk away for now. That is eventually going to be our batter. We will add the ale and the egg to that later when we're ready for it. But now, let's focus on the potatoes. Okay, now as you can see, <coughs> to save on time, I have went ahead and peeled the potatoes without filming that. Everybody knows you peel potatoes before you use them, unless the recipe calls for something different. I didn't feel the need to videotape the peeling of the potatoes. It's rather monotonous. So what we're going to do, set three of these aside, use one. We're going to take our meat cleaver here. Even though it's a meat cleaver, we're going to use it on these potatoes. Well, you're going to want to cut it right about in half, right down the middle. And then you're going to want to do the same thing once again, right down the middle on the half you just made. You're quartering the potato. In the English tradition, you're drawing and quartering the potato. <laughs> I don't want to know how many of you are not laughing right now. We're going to put the cleaver down and go with the big knife, the big chef's knife. And we're going to cut these into strips. Ordered potatoes. They're a little tough, and that's why we have the bowl of water. They'll remove some of that excess starch that makes these things so tough. So after they're cut into strips, they go into this bowl of water over here. And we're going to do that with each quarter we did, and every potato.
nice little strips like that. Now, as you can see, all our chips are cut and they are soaking in water. Now, the reason we soak it in water is to get rid of all the excess starch. The starch will impede the cooking process when we cook them in the oil. By the way, that oil I showed you in the ingredients section has been in a deep fryer setting at a temperature of about 350 degrees. That's going to be the cooking temperature for this. Anyways, getting rid of the starch, that will make it e easier to tenderize the potatoes. Then there's a little trick I'll show you, how you make them crisp, perfectly crisp. There's another thing in the ingredients that I didn't show you. I have here some wax paper and the local news. You don't have to do this. This is just the traditional way of serving it, but after the chips are all fried up, they'll be wrapped in a cone shape and wax paper and then newspaper wrapped around it. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. I'm trying to make it as authentic as possible, but like I said, it's not a necessity. Have, there's no rule that says you have to serve it in newspaper. Uh, I just feel like it's more authentic that way. And also, I wanted to show you one more thing. There's another bowl of flour over here. This flour has nothing to do with the bat batter. I'm about to explain to you what that does. Okay, where we left off last, I told you I was going to prep the fish, and I'm going to show you how. We had this extra bowl of flour here. We're going to take our tongs. No, nope, I'm missing a step, actually. We need a paper towel. And you kind of want to dab your fish down. They're a little moist whenever they're fresh, you know, so dab it down. And taking that excess moisture out of it will actually help the flour here to stick to your fish. And what the flour does is that will help the batter to stick whenever you're frying it. Your batter won't just float away. It will stick to that flour around the cod here. Just go ahead and bat some of the moisture off of those. Throw our towel away. And then just pick up a fillet while the chips are soaking in the water, getting all the starch out. Just save on time. You just you don't have to get you don't have to cover the thing. You just kind of flip it around and get it nice and floury. As I said, that will help your batter to stick. So now all of our fish have been covered in flour, and our oil is up to heat, up to temperature. And so it is time to start frying our chips. Okay, there's our fryer. There's our little spatula thing. Now there are two trays over here lined with newspaper. The newspaper will help absorb the grease from the chips after they're done frying and also the fish. Whenever they're done frying in the fryer over here, move them over, lay them on the newspaper, let the newspaper absorb the grease before we serve them. That is what those are for. Now, for the frying of the potatoes. Generally, you're going to want to let them heat for around five minutes. Nice golden brown on the potatoes. That's all we want. So let's pop the lid here. Let's go get us some chips. Now, there's going to be some crackling and popping whenever the water touches, the, the wet potatoes touch the oil. Nothing to be afraid of. Oh, that was another thing. I uh, screwed up. After the chips are done soaking, you're supposed to set them in the pan to let them drip dry so the oil will not splatter. I did not do that. So let's hope we don't have a catastrophic event whenever I set these in the fryer. Okay, first batch of chips coming into the fryer. Oh, look at those. 
they look good already, don't they? <laughs> Just wait till they're fried. So as I said, we're gonna fry those for about five minutes. Oh, hey, look, the steam vent works. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, we're gonna let those fry for about five minutes or until golden brown. It could go a little bit longer. And then we're gonna move them over to the pans over here with the newspaper. A quick side note while our chips are frying, the actual, the recipe called for a cast iron kettle to heat the oil in and a thermometer to monitor the temperature of the oil. Uh, I tried that earlier this week when I first did this recipe and it was a mess. It was an absolute mess, nightmare. Oil all over the stove. Uh, it almost caught fire, which would have been terrible. Uh, that's why I decided that it'd probably be best to cook it in a deep fryer such as the one shown here. But uh, yeah, the original recipe called for a large cast iron kettle or a Dutch oven. This is why I've decided, uh, that's why I decided not to use the kettle in this. Uh, and for future, those of you who wish to make this meal yourself, I would recommend the deep fat fryer, not the kettle, just to avoid the near miss catastrophe and all the mess that goes with it. I mean, we were cleaning oil off the stove for an hour after I finished. Uh, it was bad. <laughs> So definitely go with the deep fat fryer if you try this recipe yourself. Also on a quick side note, uh, if you hear any noise in the va uh, background, that is the television. I've got the George Zimmerman trial live streaming where at 8.47 Central Time, the jury has just announced they have a verdict. I've been watching it, following it closely for as long as it's been going on. So. If you hear any noise in the background, it's the TV live streaming the trial. I apologize. Hope it does not bother anybody. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that that's what that noise would be if it comes up. So now that our chips are done frying, it's time to start on the batter. Now remember, we mix the flour, the baking powder, the salt, and the pepper together. We're ready to add the beer and the egg. Beer and egg. Ale, actually. Not beer, ale. Like so. Now we're going to take our whisk and just whip it up until it's nice and smooth. Yeah, get all the flour in there or else the batter will come out kind of crappy. There we go. Just like so. Yeah, whip it up real good. Turn the bowl if you have to. So we can see it. You can really smell the ale in the batter. Now you remember earlier we dabbed our fish dry and we coated them with flour. We dipped them in that small mixing bowl of flour. The purpose of that was so that whenever we dip it in the batter, as it fries, the batter will stick as it fries instead of floating up in the grease. So now we're going to take our batter, our battered fish now, over to the fryer and start dropping them in. Now with the 
fish. All you have to do is cook it until golden brown. And there went the camera. Okay, now that we've recovered from our technical difficulty, we were dipping our cod, our flour coated cod, in the batter and throwing it into the fry the deep fryer which is still at 350 degrees it's very important that you keep that temperature the entire way through very important and you cook the fish until it's golden brown well we'll let that batch cook and then we will add the rest whenever it is done and then follow up with the final steps we will add the chips back into the hot oil for about one or two minutes, crisping them up a little bit. Crispin, I don't think that's a word. I'll crisp them up a little bit. Then we'll add the salt to the chips, wrap them in wax paper, and wrap the wax paper in newspaper, and we'll be ready to serve. So now our fish is ready. The next step is we're going to take all of our chips and we're going to put them back in the oil for about one to two minutes to crisp them up, as I explained earlier. And as soon as that is done, it is ready to serve. Okay, so our chips have been put in the vat to uh, make crisp for about one to two minutes. It's pretty much done. We've got one step left though. We're going to take this big old jar of salt here. Holes cut in the top. It's just a mason jar salt shaker that I made. And we're just going to salt the living hell out of these. Nice and salty. A lot of salt. Lots and lots of salt. Over both the fish and the chips. This is salty. I used a good inch of salt out of that jar. Now we're ready to prepare our fish and chips for serving. Oh. Jar of salt, because we're not done with that yet. And a small glass of malt vinegar. We got some wax paper here. We're going to take a little square of wax paper. We are going to add some chips to it. Oh, good and greasy. We're going to add some more salt to it. And we're going to fold this. Put my chips up here. Hold up the bottom so they do not fall out. <laughs> and of course my wax comes apart. That's because I'm American, I'm not English. I can't do this right. <laughs> that in there. Yeah, the hell with it. Not the hell with it. We're going to fix it. Shred of newspaper. Cool. Alright. 
We're going to take our newspaper now, unfold it all the way. I about made a boo-boo. About made an error to put a hex on the whole damn thing. Now, we're just going to fold the bottom of the newspaper up and roll it, just like a burrito. Make sure the wax paper coat. Now, from what I've read, the wax paper is so that the ink doesn't bleed into your food. That makes sense. We definitely don't want ink in our food. There's probably chemicals in there. But, having said that, I researched it made with non-toxic ink, most modern newspapers are. And as you saw, I also used a newspaper for my grease catcher for my chips. So, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Now we have, after fighting this thing for a while, I think I rolled it too tight. go. Deal of chips. One for two. Talks about pretty good. Two fillets of fish. More salt. I don't know enough salt. Chips either, so we're just going to douse them a little bit better. You know what? Let's douse the whole damn thing, shall we? Just salt the living hell out of it. There we go. That's more like it. And of course, the malt vinegar. And a napkin, just be cleanly. Fish and chips, a pint of ale, a salt shaker, malt vinegar. Let's try it and see how we did. Mm. Not bad at all. Probably wouldn't hurt to have the potatoes a little crisper, they didn't turn out quite as crisp as I wanted, but it's still damn good. Not bad for a bloody yank, if I do say so myself. Good stuff. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. This is the first video and hopefully a series of videos, one each weekend, I'm planning to post. Uh, again, please be sure, newcomers, to check out Virtual International Flying Club at fly, www.flybifc.org. Good group of guys, and you will find these and many other recipes there. God save the Queen. <laughs>